Sun's out. Oh god. <sighs> wow. This is the Panasonic AG156 SVHS reporter video camera from 1997. So what did the camcorder market look like in 1997? Well, at the very top of the line, you had camcorders like the Canon XL1, which was a three CCD, amazing manual control mini DV camcorder. And it was actually used to film 28 Days Later, which came out in 2003. You still had plenty of high and digital eight camcorders like the whole Sony Handycam series and the Canon ES4000. VHS was still very much an option. In fact, home VHS sales peaked at $16 million in 1998. But for live recording, it was getting clear that VHS wasn't the best option anymore. With that being said, there were still really cool semi-pro VHS camcorders being made. A lot of them aimed more towards educational use or local television markets. The Panasonic AG Pro line series, the AG450, 456, 460, I'm missing a bunch, but you get the idea. They all fall into that category with their SVHS capability. Man, this thing is this thing is heavy. I know the battery's already in it. Let's take a look at the battery. Check this out. <laughs> I love that. So it's a 2000 milliamp hour sealed lead acid battery. I had to buy an extra one online because obviously the one from 1997 doesn't work. These things have a shelf life of probably about five years if you use them religiously. Uh, they're not the best. They were replaced by lithium batteries, obviously. So this is a weird design. This is actually a speaker and it outputs whatever the microphone is recording with about a tenth of a second delay. So if you have this next to your ear, which you do, if you're holding it on your shoulder, because that's the only way to use this thing, you would hear whatever you're recording, but it would be at about a tenth of a second delay from the other ear. It gets kind of disorienting and I can't figure out how to turn it off, but this is the 90s and the dream is alive. Oh, there it is. So what we're gonna do is clean the video and audio heads. I have no idea if this is gonna help, but we'll see. To do this, we just need to remove the front plate of the loading mechanism. That guy down there is the video read right head cylinder, and that's what needs to be cleaned. Got some isopropyl and some random weird cleaning Q-tips and supplies that were provided in a camera kit that I bought that nobody ever uses. Get this open here, and look at that. 47, 47, 47th Street. I just can't talk, okay. It's a pretty good cleaning cloth. Do not attempt this with regular cotton Q-tips or you will ruin your VHS head. I've done it many times. Not a lot of dirt, which is a good and bad thing. It's good because this thing has stayed clean for 20 plus years, but it's bad because we don't know why the yellow video signal sucks. The tiniest bit of dirt. While well, I'm in there, I'm gonna clean any other heads that I see in rubber rollers and whatnot. Sometimes if you leave a tape in for years, it'll just shit the bed and start flaking everywhere. So it's good to clean any rollers that you can find. But it is remarkably clean in here. Props to the previous owner. Hopefully this cloth will pick up any smudges or dust that got in there. There we go. So the question is, as always, can you vlog with this thing? Well, the viewfinder is pretty much impossible to see from other than an inch away. And as you can see, it only swivels out and up and down. It doesn't turn all the way so you can stick your eye. To... I don't even know how that would be logistically possible, but I have an idea. This is a tiny color television from about 2001, runs off of batteries. And the great thing is it has an input somewhere. There it is, AV input. Let's try it. There's nothing like homemade hot glued connectors. Get in there. This actually has a video out back here, which is very convenient. I think I color coded this incorrectly. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I think we can turn the brightness down. This is a fluorescent tube display. Look at that. The contrast on this monitor is terrible. Look at that. Look at how blurry that is. I think what's happening is it's doing some form of deinterlacing because this is a TFT LCD. That's crazy. Let's attach a hot shoe.
Sorry, did I say hot shoe? I meant tape. I think it works. I literally can't, we need a better solution. I can't hold this. One problem with this is it doesn't tell you when you're recording on screen, so you just have to guess. This is what I have to do to check if I'm recording. I gotta go up. Whoa, God. This is not. Here's the setup. I have no idea how it's still standing. You can't even tell if it's recording or not. In order to do that, you gotta go underneath. You saw it for a second there, it said recording. You're also not gonna notice it on here, but it is a 60p viewfinder, which is cool. Time to take it apart. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about color grading and see how well the AG456 did at picking up certain colors. We are in Premiere Pro and I have three separate clips that I've picked out to look at. One thing to note for Lumetri scopes, I have both the vector scope YUV and the waveform Luma selected. The waveform Luma is just so that I can tell the exposure for each clip and the vector scope is so I can tell what the color saturation is. I think I'm going to use Colorista, it's my favorite plugin by Magic Bullet. It allows me to identify the colors in the shadow, midtone, and highlight ranges. One important thing to note when you have a changing shot like this in terms of the focus is the background is a lot more overexposed than the foreground. So in terms of manipulating the exposure, I'm going to do it where there's the most dynamic range, which would be the background. Looks like all I have to do here is move these shadows down a bit until it just touches zero. That looks good to me. And there's not much I can do about the overexposure. If I bring the highlight down, that just brings pretty much the entire image down, which I don't want. So I'm going to leave it where it is. One thing you're probably noticing off the bat is that this yellow tulip right here has these weird magenta lines in it. And I think that's a product of the old broadcast VHS tape I'm using. Uh, I opened it last year and since then it was brand new old stock from 1984. So there's really not much I can do about that. It's all part of the aesthetic though. Another thing you're gonna notice as we scroll through here is these little flashes of light like this one right here. These are little artifacts that occur from an old VHS tape. There's something called disc rot where it happens with an old DVD as well. I still don't know exactly what causes it, but it's part of the aesthetic. Moving on to our second clip here. Uh, I believe this one was at f1.8 and shutter speed of one over 8,000. You can see the blurry background is just beautiful on this camera. Taking a look at the scope, our highlights are slightly blown out, but because there are so few dotted around the leaves, I think it looks great. We can bring our shadows down a little bit though, which is what I'll do right now. Take this down just until right there. And that's the main problem that you're gonna notice with VHS cameras is the shadows are always, I would say between 10 and 15. Everything's a little bit blown out. You don't get those dark blacks that you're looking for. So by bringing that down a little bit, boom, it looks a lot better. Another thing you may want to consider is desharpening the footage just slightly uh, to try to get rid of those combing artifacts or make it a little bit less noticeable. Right there. Look at that. I think that looks pretty darn good. Finally, I got one shot of Sparky here. She really wanted to be in this, and she's a good subject to film because of how bright her feathers are. So this shot was using automatic controls, and it's slightly underexposed, so let's fix that. If you look here at the scope, it's actually very underexposed. So we're gonna see what we can do. Let's bring this up to right there. You can already see the image is much brighter over here. And let's bring the shadows down a touch to right there. I think her eye is gonna be the darkest thing in this photo. And at this point, you can really tell that the spinach in her cage here is darker than her feathers and that's true to real life. I am noticing a lot of magenta in the highlights here. Let's see if we can pull that back a little bit. It doesn't really show here. It's showing more green and yellow because of her feathers, but I think the secondary magenta here is a little bit too much. So let's try to bring that down. And it looks a little bit better, but I think this would be really good for the tint option in the basic correction of Lumetri color. The tint slider just changes the tint between magenta and green. And if we add in a little bit more green here, that right there looks great. The only thing I would do now is take the mid-tones and bring them slightly more towards magenta just to even out the green that we just brought in. It looks good to me. So I'm gonna finish up putting a little montage together here and I'll show you the finished product.
Thank you guys for tuning in. In the next video, I'm gonna be building a new studio, which is what part of this is back here. And these lights are all gonna change. So I know I'm casting shadows everywhere. It's gonna get better, don't worry, peace.